Hello and welcome to another Mathman video. Today I have something special for you all, a pre-review of the up and coming game Orbit Industries. For full disclosure, while this is not a sponsored review, I have been provided with the game key for free by Orbit Industries, but Orbit Industries has no influence on the review, so you are getting my honest opinion. Now, let's get a wiggle on. You know it's good when you spot yourself a building game that allows you to make the new ISS, right? Honestly, I am a huge building game nerd and can spend hours upon hours designing things and improving upon my own design, and this was no exception. With the main exterior view presented to you as you open the game, you can start building right away, giving you the chance to get to grips with design and the different types of buildings right away. Each of the five building types and the variety of buildings within each type give you a chance to shape and work your space station exactly how you like it. The key feature to be able to do this is cash flow. And while you start with a good amount of money, it is surprisingly easy to lose as you start the game without tutorial and losing money. So the first thing you want to do is to go to your resource management screen and accept the contracts you can to get money. As you can see, each contract has requirements attached to it and icons to pick which modules or buildings get occupied to do the contract. There are three main types of buildings that help in this way. Research, such as the lab, is needed for almost all early contracts and are key in discovering new parts for your space station. Already very early on, having three or four of these is an incredible benefit. Administration, such as the admin module, is what gives you access to later stage high value civilian contracts, which give you a significant boost in the quality of the contracts you receive. And the last one is defense, which gives you access to military related contracts, which are usually high in value, but have significant requirements early on, such as access to advanced buildings. As you go through the game, the pace is dictated by your cash flow, so make sure to always have contracts running, especially as you start with a negative cash flow and there will be a point where cash flow needs to be raised before you can continue developing your station. It is also helpful to pay attention to the bottom right of your screen where you can see the inflow and outflow of all resources for the selected module on the exterior view. For your station to work optimally, it is important that each module is fully supplied. If they are not, then they work at lower efficiency and that can jam your contracts. The last important screen is the ASL or Abstract System Layout. This is where you make sure that all your rooms are supplied with the correct systems and where you can control the flow of different resources. You can also see which of your modules have a bug or error and therefore need to be removed from your system. For me, the ASL has a very double feeling because, and I hate to say this, while it is a very convenient way to see what is going on in your space station, it doesn't add anything to the game. You cannot overload circuits, so you just keep adding stuff to the same circuit as you can see me do. There is no cost related to circuit burden, so complex circuits do not heighten your costs or diminishing returns on your resources, which would mean you want to keep them as simple as possible. And there is also no cost to wiring and no limitations on the circuit board size, if you can call it that, meaning all it really adds is unnecessary difficulty. The only thing it does help is that using the ASL allows you to turn on and off certain modules. But that is something which could be handled in a simpler way without the difficulty and the headache that the ASL will cause for some people. I believe unless the system gets a significant overhaul before launch, the ASL will remove fun from the experience for most people instead of adding to it. That being said, the game is very entertaining to play, being offered endless possibilities to build into different missions with modes that allow you to continue your build infinitely with the consequences of regular play or with without the consequences in a creative mode. The art and sound design are impeccable and I still get a grin on my face every time I see a pod arrive at an airlock. And trust me, you will end up with many airlocks. The music in the background is relaxing and engaging at the same time, allowing you to lose hours upon hours playing this game. I think my favorite thing about the game is that I can adapt my building and income strategy depending on the value that I want to create. If I choose to focus on defense contracts, the gameplay becomes different than when you focus on administrative contracts and your space station will look different every time you play as well. Plus, if you really feel there's too much money stuff going on or you end up in a pickle, then there are always three bank loans ready for you to make sure you don't go bankrupt like I did. 
There are a few other things I can talk about, such as the feeling that the UI is not very informative, which may well be user error, and the lack of tutorial or guide makes it very hard for a first-time player to get to grips with the game right, which may be because this is a pre-release version. There are no major flaws with the game or the gameplay, and I genuinely enjoyed myself playing it. If there's one final complaint I have, which I know is nitpicking to the extreme, why are all blocks symmetric around at least one axis? except for the drone factory. I want to be able to create my space station so they are reflected on either side and symmetric around the main axis, whichever axis that is. However, the drone factory is three blocks long on one side and two blocks on the other side of the axis. So that means that when you start flipping that around from side to side, left, right, top, down, doesn't matter, it can't actually be symmetrical. I had a literal rant on stream about this, and if you want to see the rant or any other gameplay, then I've left you a link in the card upstairs or the description below to the full, unedited, two hour play session that we had and if you do decide to pick it up then there's a code in the description below that lets them know you came from me but for now my name is mathman and it's time to sign off